Proverbs chapter 10. What we're doing now, what we're into in Proverbs now is good versus evil, right versus wrong. And most of the verses we're going to look at, you're going to have a point A and a point B. And they don't agree with each other. And they're going to be contrasting. The Proverbs of Solomon. And Proverbs is to make like a similitude. Now, they've been Proverbs of Solomon since chapter 1, verse 1, but we're in a new realm. A wise son maketh glad a father, but a foolish son is heaviness of his mother. Now, the opposite, the contrast, is a wise son. Versus a foolish son. The wise makes his father glad, happy. The foolish son causes his mother troubles, problems, causes her to worry, causes her to tears, causes her to pray harder. And it's a biblical fact that the Old Testament was if a child disobeyed his parents, you took him out, you stoned them. The Bible says in both Testaments, in the law and in the church age by Paul, a child is to honor his father and mother. Children will give an account on the heaviness of their mother and the gladness of their father. You can't have a wise son and you can't have a foolish son. You can't be worldly and you can't be godly. When you walk down that middle of the road in, in Revelation chapter 4, the lads are seeing church age, it just makes God sick. God said, I would rather have you be cold, I'd rather be hot. But since you're lukewarm, you can walk down the middle of the road, but that's not the place to be walking. Treasures of the wickedness, treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death, wickedness, righteousness. Now we had the wise son, we had the foolish. So when you look at these problems, there's going to be no right and wrong, right and wrong, right and wrong. You're going to have right and wrong, wrong and right, wrong and right, right and wrong, wrong and right. There's no specific order, but there is a contrast. And here we have wickedness and righteousness. And the righteous are delivered from death. And when it comes to death and judgment, the wickedness in his treasures are not going to do you no good. Now the righteous, what makes them good in judgment and right with God is they have done what God has told them to do. They have obeyed God. The wickedness of the, of the evildoers, they have defiled God, they rebelled against God, and whatever they have laid up, money, fame, material stuff, stocks, bonds, trophies, their treasures will profit nothing, nothing, nothing. When you're standing at that great white, great white throne, you are standing there in your nakedness. No clothing, no place for your pocketbook, no place for your wallet. All the earth, heavens, have already been burnt up. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casts away the substance of the wicked. All right, there's... The righteous, and then there's the wicked. They're two different groups of people. Famish is to starve. Now we're in the Old Testament. Don't come up to me and say, well, the Bible contradicts. Because you know the Walt Disney, Walt Disney, Walt Disney, forgive me, Lord God, for that sin. 
they were led out into the into the mountains, the cold mountain, and there they, they were made to suffer, they were made to freeze to death, they died by starvation, they died by not having no water. Old Bible conquered it. We're looking at Old Testament. Even Paul said, listen, I fasted. And then there were times I had no food. I voluntarily gave up food for the Lord. And there were times I did not have food. That contradiction is Old Testament, New Testament. I can imagine John, when he's on the island of Patmos, had some times where he had no food. I can imagine that there were times that Paul was in a prison, a dungeon, and there was no food. But he casts away the substance, go right back to the treasures of the wicked. Everything that a wicked man has, at the great white throne judgment, it's gone. Eliminated. What's the righteous have? They have the righteousness of obeying the law for the, for the Old Testament. They have the righteousness of Jesus Christ for the New Testament, the church age, and everything we've done for God. Listen, David had a heart for God, though he couldn't build that temple, man, and God was pleased with his ideas, and God was pleased that he gave him the blueprint, and he gathered the silver, gold, and all that was needed. I would assume that would give to some account of David in the in the millennia in the in the future as a Christian. Whatever he does for Christ will last. He becometh poor that deals with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent maketh rich, poor and rich. Now the poor is slack hand is he won't work, he's lazy. The hand that diligent is doing some things, it is laboring, it is working. And that rich always doesn't mean gold, silver, and all that. That could be rewards. Of a paycheck, a bill to pay your bills, that could be eternal rewards and glory. That can also be for the Christian at the judgment seat of Christ. You can be rich or you can be poor by what you do with your living. Compared, do you want to live for yourself or do you want to live for God? He that gathers in summer is a wise son but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame we got a shameful son and we got a wise son summer is pretty much not the time of harvest but goes out there in the summertime and he gathers and it may not be fruit it may be Tending to the crops that need to be, I mean, a vineyard, you have to tie things up and, you know, you got to prune, you got to clip, you got to water. You, you, there's laboring, but the harvest is the time that you come and the man that sleepeth in the harvest, he's going to have nothing when it comes fall and winter and back into the springtime. Now, America violates the scriptures we're reading now because America will give substance and help to people who do not do nothing at all. And they sit on their butt and watch TV all day or they lie in their bed like a whore and make babies to get more money. And I said it's a whore with the government giving you the check. That's a whore. And America being her John. And it's not called welfare. It's called whoredom. It's called adultery. And it's called stealing. And America will be charged as everybody who's responsible for giving a lazy person 
a ch monthly check. You better believe I said that about America. Now, there are people who work for a living, who don't make enough to make a living. Those people need to help. Blessings, happiness, are upon the head of the just, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. So, just versus wicked. Now, as we go through these Proverbs now, we're going to learn definitions. By comparing the counterwise, we're going to see one and we're going to see the other. And I said sometimes it's going to be the good and the bad, sometimes it's going to be the bad, then the good, but we're going to see the opposite meaning of some words in the Bible. And one verse is going to say yay and then nay, or it may say nay and it may say yay. It's going to be reverse order, there's no specific order. And you got to look at the Bible verse as we're doing and say, which side am I on? Paul writes that we cannot serve God and we can't serve Belial. So Proverbs, separate word is law, Old Testament, specifically for the Jew and the land. We back away from those. Though we may spiritualize, and I will apply if we can do it like that. But well, look at Proverbs. What can I do as a Christian? Okay. Well, happiness is found the head of the just. Violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Are you just? Or are you wicked? Are you getting blessings from God? Or are you getting violence? Are you involved with violence? Violence covers the mouth. Today, everyone's got to wear, wear a veil over their mouth. They're not repenting to God. They're not fearing God. They're fearing a virus. When you don't fear God, you're wicked. Because the fear of the Lord is beginning to understand. The fear of the Lord is beginning to knowledge. And be careful too, because the devil can give you blessings. The devil can give you temporary happiness. And it doesn't last for all eternity. Alcohol will make you happy and glad and make you party and make you look like an idiot. But, I mean, the next morning it don't work, but hey, you had a good time. God's happiness is enduring. Even amongst trials and tribulations and problems in your life, you still can have the love, joy, peace, the fruit of the Spirit, even though you don't feel well. Even though you don't... Uh, but inside you still got that oh, I'm happy I'm not feeling good but I'm, I've been there I'm not involved in violence my life is not a wreck and when it is a wreck and the devil has it to be a wreck or my sins have it to be a wreck or the world will have it to be a wreck I've got the peace and joy of God. Say, so just relax. City of Daytona is trying to shut down the street preachers. Just relax. Let God handle it. I'm not going to resort to violence. I'm not going to go protest. I'm just going to let people do what their job is and do. And if the Lord closes the door, there's, there's other opportunities. The memory of the just is blessed, happy. The name of the wicked shall rot. So when you look at these Proverbs, look at the two main words, just and wicked. What memory of the just will be happy and blessed? When you're standing at the judgment seat of Christ and, and your, <coughs> excuse me, your works have been judged, what is blessed and happy? When there's gold, silver, and precious stones, and you look at the Lord Jesus Christ humbly, and he says, well done. And he puts a crown or crowns upon you. And even more blessing, you say, listen, you get a right inheritance. Listen, even you get a city of inheritance. That's going to be more, 
more joyful than the, than the Christian who ain't going to get nothing at all. He couldn't even find gold dust. The wicked shall rot. Now, all through the world, the heroes of the world are the wicked. They just played football, and I haven't watched football in many, many years. And my understanding, I don't, I watch or just look at the headline. But I, from what I've seen, the players wore a name on their helmets, I believe. And the man that they wore the name of was what they say, many are saying, was a rapist. That's your hero. Some of these riots are, are criminals that the police had killed. Threatening the police. Listen, I don't care what you say, and I ain't prejudiced. Martin Luther King, excuse me, Michael Luther King Jr. Where that man was and what that man did caused insurance companies to, to freak out and what they would have to pay for claim of fire, rioting. The rioting is going on today was the same rioting that followed Michael Luther King Jr. Don't you dare reference his name to Martin Luther. Martin Luther didn't go and riot. And if you don't like what I'm saying, you don't care what I'm saying, you call me prejudiced or not, but it is the fact. If your name is not in the land's book of life, Lazarus and the rich man. What was the rich man's name? He has no name. You notice even Revelation chapter 20 says the, the book of life. It doesn't even say the land's book of life. It says check the book of life. And if their name is not in the book of life, they don't get a name. They go into hell and burn forever without a name. And I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. I don't care how many touchdowns. I don't care how many home runs. I don't care what you do with a soccer ball. I don't care how many enemies you get. I don't care how many Tonys you get. I don't care how fast the, the fastest you ever gone. I don't care how many trophies you got. If you die in the rebellion against God and his commandments or Jesus Christ today, in the lake of fire and in hell, you have no name and your memory is gone. Now it says, the memory of the just is blessed. There will be good things of David and Solomon we will remember in heaven. I don't know about the adultery and the murder and worship of God. The Bible says, though Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, my word shall never pass away. Bathsheba's story is in the Bible. Solomon offering gods and billing to the hype is in the Bible. All right, let's take a church age. The fumbling Peter. And yet Peter got the witness the first time to the Jewish people about Jesus and he got the witness to the Gentiles pretty much the first time outside of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. How about the entire story of the Apostle Paul? Would that be worth going to be remembered? What about the entire story? And John says there are even stories that were not even written. What about the entire stories of Jesus Christ, the judge? Just. You think all heaven will be glorifying everything that Jesus has done? You think we're going to lift up a guy who took a ball and did something with a ball? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can we have a golf clap? <laughs> Bible says we're going to get a new name in heaven. I believe that. I think we're going to get a new name according to the character we were on earth. I guarantee my new name would be something like Loudmouth. And that would be an honor because I took my loud mouth and used it for Jesus. Can you imagine someone who's going to walk into heaven forever? Hey, what's your name? Reckless. What's your name? Slumber. What was your name? Good for nothing. 
That's in the Bible good for nothing. How'd you like to live with a name like that for all eternity? What would you do? I can't remember. What do you mean you can't remember? Well, I didn't do nothing for Jesus. Come on, let's throw our crowns down at Jesus. I don't have any. Can you see Paul? I mean, I, I don't know if we're going to throw our crowns down with four and 24 hours. We may. I don't know. But can you imagine that moment that Paul's up there? Man, that guy's got crowns that chuck left and right, chuck and left and right. And Peter. And if we hold to the name of being just in the memory of the blessed for Jesus Christ, that's going to carry us over all glory. Can you, can you, I don't know how, what heaven's going to be like, but can you imagine that moment? I'm only, I know about speaking about me, and I'm not trying to lift up me. But can you imagine it came up time we're in glory and say, hey, you were that guy at that farmer's market. Yeah. Well, you know, you don't know who I am, but I got saved because you're later on. I got, I got saved because you're preaching. Really? Yeah. I want to thank you very much. And then we're going to sit and chit chat on how the world tried to stop me. Yeah, you know, they, they, they did that music. They called the cop. They did this. They cussed you. Man, you know, that really amazed me how you just stood there and preached the word. You got angry, but you know, you didn't get violent. You just, and that's what encouraged me more to, you know, because I had an anger problem on the earth. You didn't get, you encouraged me because you stood your ground for Jesus. And later on, when somebody came and watered the seed that you planted, I got, and, and the Lord moved you on, or the Lord did something with you. I could never go back. And I went back, and you weren't there. I couldn't thank you. Well, let me thank you now. And that time's going to be, we're going to talk about the times that the farmer's market ministry. There may be people going to come up to me, hey, you know, hey, you don't know who I am. You have no idea who I am. But I'm in here because you helped me. Oh, how? Well, you left one, and Jesus told me you left one of those gospel tracts in the public bathroom at, at the gas station. Yeah, I did that a lot. I want to tell you, I sat down, was doing my business. I read that track, and let me tell you, I, I received Jesus Christ. That's going to be glory to God and glory to those who are saved. But you can be wicked, and everything you've done for the world, and everything you've done for the devil, and everything you've done for yourself, well, wait, I don't even remember. Why don't you remember? It burned up. That's a shame. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a prating fool shall fail, shall fall. All right, wise fool. Now receive commandments. That doesn't mean you know God will come down. Hey, here's some more ten commandments. That's, that's not that's not what's happening. You're going to read through the Bible. You're going to say, "Love my neighbor." Okay. Love the brethren, okay. Preach to all the world the gospel, okay. I'm to honor my mother and father, okay. You're receiving it as you read what the Bible said, and you okay. I may struggle with whatever you read and 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 battle, but when you receive the commandment, you know what? I'm going to do it, or I'm going to fight my flesh to do it. That's what it means to receive. I mean, don't go up to, you know, thinking that God's going to give you a new set of commandments. That's an occult. But a prating fool shall fall. Pranting means much talk. He talks too much. Educators, politicians, and people, the Bible says that Jesus said, Man shall give an account of every idle word. That's scary. Because the man that talks too much, and it, the context of that verse, and it's the context of the verse, you got a wise in heart. He's going to say what's proper. 
the printing fool is going to say things not from. Now, it's not the guy who preaches on the street. It's not the pul the preacher behind the pulpit. It's not the guy that's knocking on door. You know, you're saying to, no, that's not the case. Because wisdom is spoken about in Proverbs as the one that goes out and witnessing. It's the foolish in his foolish talk. He's going to fall. How is he going to fall? Jesus said every idle word. Think about foolish people and their idle words. Standing at either judgment have to give an account. If there's anything for politicians, you need to shut up. Especially if you're unsafe. You need to tell, you need to write your favorite politician, where it would be state or federal, you need to write that, whoever he is, he said, I got good advice for you, sir, or ma'am, in the Bible. You need to shut up. Because he's going to make campaign promises he does not do. He's a liar. And don't say, I didn't have enough time. I didn't get the votes. This other party prevented. No, you said, and if you didn't do, every idle word. Plain and simple. Verse 9. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely. But he that prever perverteth his way shall be known. Here's one that walks uprightly. And here's one that he's walking pervertedly. The one that's walking pervertedly, his way, you're going to know who he is. And so sorry in the world today, not America, it's sorry in the world today that the man who walks perversely, he's known as somebody spectacular. He's known as somebody is fame. Somebody is fortune. Somebody who is somebody to talk about. Somebody to put their name in something. Not in the eyes of God. Says he that walketh uprightly walketh surely. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal right. How do I know I have eternal life? I have walked uprightly by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as my seed. How do I know God is pleased? I go in the world and I preach the gospel. I honor my parents. I try to do. Listen, there are Christians. In my church, I don't hate any of them. Some of them, I really don't want to have anything to do with them. I don't. We, we're opposite. I pray for them. Whatever, whatever that thing that doesn't get along, I, I don't hate them. I just don't. I don't think it's a sin. I pray for them. You can't pray for somebody seriously and then having to hate them. Uprightly, I, I know they're my brethren. Though I may not like a couple of them, I know they're my brethren. I love them and I pray for them. But the perverted one, you know what that guy does? You know where that guy works? You know where that guy... And today, that, that perversion is just put on the social media, it's put in the media, and it's upheld as, whoa, that's someone important. If the media in the world lifts somebody up today, that is somebody who's perverted, and there it is. How do I know somebody's good or bad? If the media thinks they're good and wonderful, they're bad. Plain and simple. He that winketh with the eye causes sorrow, but a prattling fool shall fall. All right, now we got one little exception rule here. We got a guy who's winking his eye. Wink, wink. I've had people, I've had Christians do that to me. 
Well, you know, wink, wink. You got something wrong with your eye? Why don't you just come out and say what you got to say? That wink, wink means, you know, I'm, it's up to no good. Christian ought not to be winking his eye. And I've seen pastors do it. Not one good wink in the eye, as far as I know, is good. That prattling fool, he that winked his eye causes sorrow, but a prattling fool talks too much, shall fall. That's twice. That's a verily, verily. You're going to fall at the judgment where every idle word shall man give an account. I mean, well, you know, that guy took, listen, Adolf Hitler foolishly talked and 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 killed and killed and killed. Adolf Hitler killed millions of Jews. And that man didn't pull a trigger. That man didn't hold a gun, but his mouth. And he died, according to what they say, he set himself on fire. Well, he's going to stand before God one day. And if Jesus Christ told Paul, why persecute is thou me, vowed him with Christians, all that, imagine what Adolf Hitler is going to have to give an account when he killed all those Jews. With his mouth, his foolish mouth. That's one reason right there. Don't be a politician. Don't be a used car salesman. That talk, talk, talk. The mouth of the righteous man is a well of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Righteous, wicked. Plain and simple. A well of life. Well is water. Water is lit. You need more water before you need to run out of food. You need air, water, food. And there was a well of water where Jesus met the woman and she got saved in the entire city. And Jesus said, I am the water of life. That well of life is Jesus Christ. But violence covers the mouth of the wicked. We've already read that in verse number... Where is that? Verse 6. That's a verily, verily. That's a that's important. It's important. I repeated it. And when the Bible repeats something, and when the Bible puts something in brackets, brackets or parentheses, you need to pay attention. Hatred stir up strife, but love covers all sin. Love versus hatred, hatred versus love. Hate causes fight. Your hatred for somebody or something, you're going to try to get other people to jump on your wagon of hatred. Republicans try to get other people to go against the Democrats, and the Democrats try to get other people to go against the Republicans. That's why you have no business to be in politics. But love covers all sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We love him because he first loved us. This is the this is the love of God that he, he gave his only begotten Son. He, God gave himself. That's love. God is love. The only thing that covers the sins is the blood of Jesus Christ, the finished work of Jesus Christ. In the lips of him that has understanding, wisdom is found. But the rod for the back of him that is void of understanding. Here's one that has understanding. Here's one that doesn't have understanding. The lips of the one that has understanding. Out of the understanding lips, wisdom comes out. The one that doesn't have understanding. 
He gets the rod. That's chastisement. That's correction. That's what the rod is for. And we'll see the rod in Proverbs. That's for a child that doesn't behave and doesn't do what his parents bid him. Now, Paul was struck with rods, but that was for the word of God. That was for Jesus. That wasn't for correction. But if you have understanding and you have wisdom in your lips to know how to say and when to say, you don't deserve correction. Your correction comes when you don't know what to say and you don't know when to say it and you open your big fat mouth. Then you need that rod. Now the attack of the world is when you do have understanding and you do have the wisdom of God to speak about God, then they want to chastise you. They want to punish you like they did with James and John, like they did with, with Peter. They did with Paul. They've done with me. Let's shut him up. They say the number one reason why they're giving me a hard time at the farmer's market is because my words, they say, offend the people. My words about Jesus and the gospel in heaven or hell are wisdom words of understanding the word of God. And the world don't like that. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Wise versus foolish. You can't be both. You can't be worldly wise and godly wise. Godly wise, God is the creator. Worldly wise, we, we're evoluted. Bible wise, I got to forsake sin. Worldly wise, let's go out for the gusto and do it all we can do. The wisdom of God, read your Bible and study your Bible. The worldly God, Oh, you got mystery, you got no you got novels, you got sci-fi, you got who done it, you got languages, you got a whole bookstore. And even the world has come in. We were in a book, we were in the book a big bookstore the other day. And I'm looking at, you know, see if I can find a good Christian biography. You can't. And they got a section in the Christian section besides Bibles. Shelves and shelves and shelves of perverted Bibles, but one little section for King James. But they had a section over there in the Christian, and it's just remarkable. I forgot, was it fiction, Christian, or Christian fiction? Friend, those are two words that don't go together. Christian and fiction? God don't write fiction, the devil does. So the world may chastise us for the wisdom and the understanding of our lips of God, but that's, that, that's contrary to what the Bible, the Bible says the fool who don't know how to say, who does not know what to say and when to say, he's the one to be chastised. Well, that's the one the world lifts up. That's the one the world promotes. You see, as we get these Proverbs now, we're going to see, we're going to see who God likes and we're going to see who the world likes and that's going to come to the contrast. Wise men lay up knowledge but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Have you got the point yet? There's wise and there's foolish. Look at chapter 9 verse 1. Wisdom has built her house. 9 verse 13. The foolish woman is clamorous, simple, and knows nothing. Nowhere in the book of Proverbs, at least, the wise is as good as the fool, and the fool as good as the wise. Nowhere. 
Now, there's one or two times the fool is mentioned as good. But he's not wise. So wise men will lay up knowledge. But the talkative fool is going to destroy himself. And if he doesn't destroy himself on this planet Earth, he will destroy himself at either judgment. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. On the earth, living on the earth, the rich and the poor. Rich, he's got the fame and the fortune, and that poor man, he's grind to the grinding stone, and he's got to work to, to give to the rich man. That's life. That's life, whether you have a president, you have a king, or whatever you have. And God will judge those rich and how they treat the poor. And God will judge the poor on how they treat the rich. And only the saints of God, Old Testament, New Testament, get to go with the treasures and vast, great riches of God in glory. The labor of the righteous tended to light. The fruit of the wicked is to sin. There's a righteous, there's a wicked. What's the righteous do? He wants to do more for God to gain more life. That's Old Testament. That's the law. That's not the Christian. Where is the Christian? His labor is going out and preaching the gospel and trying to get people saved. The fruit of the wicked is sin. Whatever the wicked man does, Old Testament, New Testament, whatever he does of, of his rebelling against God and the word in Jesus, they'll come up to you, I'm good. Sin. I go to church sin. I give money. Sin. Even the goodness of the wicked, it's sin. As much as their adultery, their murders, their killing, their, their robbery, their theft, and, and the good that the wicked do is sin. And to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. I think what we're going to do is we're going to stop right there. We're at a good spot. We're halfway through. I am not in a hurry to finish the Proverbs. I can go down. And you're like, what did he say? You didn't learn nothing. We'll stop right there. we got a comfortable time right now. And remember what we're reading now. There's A... And the opposite, there's B. And there's B, and the opposite, there is A. And you need to look at each of the verses with a few exceptions. You need to look at the verses in Proverbs now and say, where do I stand? Am I on the good side of that verse? Or am I on the bad side of that verse? And if you're on the bad side, you need to confess your sins. Well, I'm not that wicked. But are you on the wicked side of that verse? Are you leaning more to the wickedness side? And we need to repent. And if you're leaning to the good and the, great, the greatness and the holiness of that verse, we got to lean more and more and more away from the wickedness and the foolishness. We've got to do more. For the Christian in the book of Proverbs, an Old Testament book is, where do I stand? Am I, I'm doing good? I need to do better. I'm doing better? I need to do the bestest. Well, wait a minute. I'm on the bad hand. i got to get out of the bad hand. i got to start doing good. Man, I'm in the, wow, I'm bad. Really bad. you got to get out of the badder and get into the gooder. 
I ought not to be on the hands of the wicked of that verse. I need to be on the hands of the righteous. And I got to remember, I can't serve Christ and Belial. I got to either serve the one or serve the other. I either got to serve the Lord Jesus Christ or I'm going to serve the world. I can't do both because Jesus said, I'd rather you be cold. I'd rather you be hot, but I don't want you lukewarm. You make me sick. Now, if you walk cold and walk in the world and you're sick, you're not going to get no rewards, but stop making God sick. Get on the hot side. Get on fire for God. And reach for Jesus one day, walking away from the judgment seat of Christ. Well done. And that's how you please God. Lord willing, we'll pick up the last part of chapter 10 tomorrow night.